Are we going to be talking about Overwatch in this podcast? Yeah, it might get there. We might get there. I was about to say, you um, might as well let me so switch the face things. rig on. Oh, you should just, like, do it. There we go. You need a background. Um, okay, give me a second. How about now? Okay. <laughs> the Oktoberfest background was a bit much. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, okay. <laughs> oh, it's... A... Okay. That's so weird. <laughs> <laughs> ridiculous. There you go. Right there. Perfect. I don't know what to say to you. <laughs> well, <laughs> there we there we have our um, our thumbnail for the stream. <laughs> yeah. No oh, fuzzy. There we go. I can move now. Oh it's somehow tracking your <laughs> eye line somehow. <laughs> oh, I, oh my fucking god! You're staring over to the side, and it's all fuzzy on my side. Is it fuzzy for you guys? Uh, the background's fuzzy, but the... I don't really like the way she looks. This is, a, this is actually a free, a free DLC someone made. Well, for free DLC, it's pretty good. Okay, I'm going to be the boob chick now. Oh, yeah, there you go. <sighs> <laughs> Jared Twitter. <Twitter's fine. laughs> uh... Oh, my God. The ways I spend my Thursdays. <laughs> I love the spider chick right here. That one's pretty cool. She's yeah, so pretty sexy. Cool. <laughs> it, 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 if the, if the eye line mapping for the thing worked with where your eyes were, uh, so it was looking more ahead, then it'd be pretty, then it'd be kind of neater. Mm, but hey. 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 <laughs> Console explosion. It's madness. <laughs> it's madness. I'll, I'll never see Sailor Moon the same again. <laughs> That's what one of the people said. <laughs>
Uh, he, and it won the Hugo Award last year for Best Novel. Um, Philosopher has the link. I presume you're posting it in the chat. Oh, yeah, I'll post it right now. And then I'll also post it in the show notes down below for anyone watching on YouTube. Um, it is a very good book. Um, it's the first translated science fiction novel uh, to win a Hugo Award. It has a really interesting story with uh, some interesting narrative. It's a great perspective in science fiction that we don't normally get, where it's a... I mean, Chinese science fiction is something we don't normally get. We, the main countries we get science fiction stuff from is obviously from the, obviously from the Anglophone zone, the U.S., Canada, Australia, U.K., that sort of thing, and by extension, the, European Un the countries in the European Union. And we get science fiction from Japan, but we don't get much discussion about Chinese science fiction. In fact, there isn't much Chinese science fiction in terms of films or <laughs> movies and stuff at all. They tend to go more towards fantasy if they're doing speculative fiction at all. And it's just a really well-written book. It brings in some neat, interesting cult Chinese cultural history stuff. In fact, the, the one of the characters, their motivations, goes back to stuff they experienced during the Cultural Revolution and stuff um, under Mao. And it explains all this stuff really well. It's well-translated. It is an exciting read. I will get a copy of... I will get the link to my video review of it and, put, and see about getting that in the uh, show notes as well. Um... It is definitely worth checking out, and considering that you can now get it for free, all the more reason. So I'm going to not talk with my mic muted first off, and then I'm going to grab that link, and I will tag you guys. And that sounds really interesting. I love anybody who's willing to, to share that joy for free. So let me get this. And I will post that. So, and when did this go live? Oh, this. Uh, I'm having difficulty finding the link. Finding. Oh, uh, for my video, I'll post it later. Um, the news broke on this like just today. Oh. So now is the time to get on the ground floor. Give me a second. I need to adjust my camera a little bit. There you go. Now you can see me a little better. Um, yeah. This this um, broke just today. Um, as far as the news goes. And so that, now's a great time to get on the ground floor. Again, this is all for free. And free book in ebook form every month. They haven't announced what they're doing for next month yet, but Tor has got a deep bench of really great science fiction. So definitely check this out. All right, and thank you, good sir, for bringing that to our attention. I'm going to have to check this out once we're done here. Uh, let's see here. Uh, so many things to talk about. The first thing that I'll get onto, this is short, but I, I actually checked this out. I have There's more to look up on it. Um, but uh, if you ever heard of the game Evolve, it's basically a first-person shooter, MOBA-ish game where you play as either the monster or four hunters. And it's made by the people who made Left 4 Dead. It is... Um, it's a very fun game, but it was it did have about a $6 price tag, and now it's gone free-to-play, and it's called Evolve Stage 2. So it is free now. Uh, there are microtransactions involved, but you can play the game and earn characters with in-game currency, from what I understand. It's pretty fun, so if you guys are ever curious about this game, go check it out. Really good game. Garbage. Um, <laughs> oh, no. Have you played it? Yeah, I own it for the PlayStation 4. Oh, that's your problem right there. You're not playing it on PC. It's free on uh, Steam. I don't know about no. I don't know about PS4. So well, see the thing is, is like the game came out and it just again was one of these rushed deals. Was just focused on you know a multiplayer only, which is fine because that's what Left 4 Dead. Well, I guess Left 4 Dead you kind of had your one player, but anyways, it was a lot of people felt it was rushed and underwhelming and mm -hmm. wasn't as good compared to what the uh, beta was. I played the beta. Um, it was all right. Um, played it on the PlayStation. It's it's all right, but you know, for seventy nine ninety nine, it wasn't worth it. Fifty nine ninety nine, not worth it. Forty nine thirty nine. I mean, even even being a free to play, still isn't worth it. What? Well, well, I, I, actually, I will say, Jim, um, they've done some rebalancing stuff as well. I haven't had a chance to play it firsthand. But Jim Sterling did a really good video on this, um, covering over the changes, and he feel and he's 
he played it before and he's played it now. And from contrasting them, he feels that the changes they've made, not just in terms of going free to play, but how they've adjusted the balance, how they've adjusted the interface, and how the game plays in general, is definitely makes it a more enjoyable experience. Um, and the fact that it's free to play helps. And also the because it's free to play, it's gotten more people playing it, so it's easier to find people to play with, as opposed to the Battleborn server levels that it was at before. Actually, that's not fair hmm. to Battleborn because it had less players than ba- less players before than Battleborn has now. Damn. Yeah. Um, that see, that's that's a good point right there. Um, so thank you, Alex. Um, I, I played the game. I bought the game late in. Uh, we'll call it vanilla, the uh, the non expansion or non stage one version. Um, I played vanilla during the later end of its life cycle, and I had a friend who's just ecstatic about this game, so he told me all the changes they made, and they still had a lot of collision issues and, and some balancing problems, and definitely had a hard time finding games sometimes, especially with our levels being so different, him being like super high and me very, very low, and I stopped playing it for a little bit, and then I went back and played Stage 2, and they've made a lot of different improvements on the game, so I would say my personal opinion is to go check it out for yourself. And try it again. If you guys were one of the ones that played it and you felt burnt from the game because it didn't play right or wasn't that good, uh, try it out again. It, it did get released way too early, I think. It did have a lot of bugs and issues, but they've patched that over the course of time. Uh, we still have this this habit as gamers to play a game based off the first impression. And as sad as that is, you you think the first impression would be the la- would be the, how the game should be for the rest of its life cycle, but that's not where we're at anymore with gaming. They get updates. Um, they get changed, they get patched, so um, it's been out for a while now, so so try it out again is what I would say to that game. But I at least wanted to bring that up. Jared is a hater. You know, he doesn't like games that aren't perfect when they first come out. He, Look, he's the, high game, the game came out, the game came out, and this is again where I get it with these uh, game developers. You release these games, and they're not fucking done, and you, you're rushing these shit, and it's becoming garbage. Now for me, who spent money on this game, and it's now a free-to-play, I feel even more ripped off. But what the fuck do I get? You do get the Founders Pack. Good sir. Thank oh, you for God. asking. Founders Come pack. on down. Oh, what is that? A skin? <gasps> Why? Oh. Let me tell you, good sir. So, no. What the what the Founders Pack is, is you get... Um, some of the characters are locked, and there's a rotation kind of like a MOBA now. So a lot of the characters that you had originally... Or all the characters that you had originally are all still unlocked. I think some of them you have to redo the tutorial to do, but you can get them all for free. And then you do still get skins and such. And also different... Uh, the... I don't want to get too much in depth with it, but it kind of has a like a League of Legends type system similar to the runes type thing, where you can buy certain passive skills before you go into the game for your for your hunter or your monster, and you get a lot of money that goes towards unlocking those. And you really don't even need those because you can unlock them by doing different things in the game. But you get um, a lot of things to kind of compensate for that money that you did spend. So it, it might not be good enough for you. Um, you might still be pissed off but uh, you do get something that the people who are getting it free-to-play don't have and have to work towards to get. So there is that. Still garbage. <laughs> Still better than Street Fighter V, though. <laughs> I, knew, I, knew, I, was, I should have said something. I knew you were going to go there, but I, I just figured I'd let you have it. That's fine. That's fine. Um, next thing that I'm very excited for, I watched about 15 minutes of it. I'm going to watch the rest of it later on tonight. I'm super pumped. Season 2 of Mr. Robot is out. If you guys have not seen Season 1, you need to fix that right away. I have a link to where you can watch the first episode for free. Um, so I'll post that in the chat, and I'll also post that down in the show notes below or in the comments. So definitely watch it. If you guys are... Uh, if you'd like to fight club with the whole anti-consumerism thing, or you like like hacking stories, or if you even like the character... Um, I can't think of his name, but he was in uh, Until Dawn. He was the brother that kind of got everybody together. His likeness, that guy, is this, the same person that's the main character of this TV show. So if you haven't seen it, definitely check it out. I will post that link. It's super excited. Um, I, mean, I never heard of this show. It's not super popular. It's I, I, about, I, I heard it's really s- good. I heard it's really good. It's, yeah, and I, I've seen like just bits and pieces when they're like, oh, on the next episode type thing. And I'm like, fuck, this looks good. Never watched it, though. That's the yeah. problem. <laughs> Yeah. I've I, I heard it. It, it, it looks really good too. Um, probably has some of Christian Slater's best best acting in years. Ooh, man, that's true. 
Oh, man. Yeah, it's it's one that I, I, I caught later on. I got my girlfriend into it. She loves it. Uh, I have some other friends that are really into it. It's... Ah, oh, man. Yes, and Christian Schlater... The, Schlater? Christian Schlater does play in this movie, and he does a fantastic job, I feel. Wait, is, is it a, a TV show? TV show, sorry. Now you say it's a movie, man. It's a TV I mean, show. I don't know. I mean, shit. Um, Get I'm, your shit right. I'm about well, to say, I actually just heard about the show, like, literally today... Well, I was looking at the TV screen for once. <laughs> I don't watch TV as much as I used to. I watch nothing but Netflix, Hulu, and YouTube. It's the future, bro. Yeah, I don't watch cable. Mm-mm. Yeah, we have satellite at work now, so that's how I found out. Ah, uh, yeah. Yep, yep, the lunchroom. It's good old yes. stuff. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, um, it's free. We're getting satellite for free now. Ooh, I'm going to report you. I'm gonna report you. you. You can't report us because it's been supplied literally by the satellite company. Huh. They well. they basically told Santa's Club, hey, thank you for all your hard work of letting us um, sell our satellite stuff at your club. He'll have some free, um, I was going to say cable, free satellite channels. How do you guys even uh, you know, decide what to watch? How many guys are watching? <laughs> Rochambeau. Um, I I picked SpongeBob. That's the first thing I watched at the break room. Uh, I mean, but how do you guys decide what to watch? Um, first come, first served. Okay. It's all oh, the managers come in and they want to watch something, which is which not all of them would do, but that one manager will. Do uh do they appreciate you watching SpongeBob? Um, I guess so. No one complained. No one did not. No one did not. Like, hey, let's watch something else. I mean, I'll be perfectly fine. I was just looking for something to watch. But do you do you say that to people? Like, hey, what if they're watching sports, for instance? Hey, they don't. If they don't ask, I don't do anything. No, no, no. But if, if you come in and you see them watching sports, uh, <laughs> whatever, do you say, hey, let's watch SpongeBob? Unless it's a UK for UK versus Louisville, no. What they usually watch is soap opera or um, that black Dr. Phil guy. Black Dr. Phil guy? Oh, what's his name? Uh, he did a show called Failing Matters. And, um, Steve Urkel? No, not Urkel. <laughs> no, it's... The guy that played Carl Winslow. What? Uh, You're kidding me. I don't know. Who is he? <laughs> the black Dr. Phil your family matters. I'm gonna Google this. Black Doctor Phil. I think you're full of shit. <laughs> oh my god. Um, I, I I always consider him the black of Doctor Phil. But didn't you watch Family Matters before Doctor Phil even ever uh, came out? I I I, I, oh, no, I believe it, Dr. It, it's not Family Matters. <laughs> Never mind. Oh, oh it's oh, oh it's the guy who hosts um Family Feud. Yes, oh, that's Steve Harvey. It. Okay. Yeah, you know what's funny is when I Google Black Doctor Phil, Steve Harvey popped up. <laughs> <laughs> wanna... There you go. <laughs> so I, all right. I guess I, I guess I did have Steve Volk on my mind. No, it's um family you matters. Had the, you had the first name right. <laughs> um, <laughs> in in later news, Steve Harvey. Yes, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, they either watch him oh. or. It's not Family Matters. What did he just say it was? Family, family Feud. Family, family Feud. feud. He family literally had a show called The Steve Harvey Show. Yeah. Yeah. They they yeah. watch that too. Okay. He has a talk show too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I know. They, they, for some odd reason, the people at work follow this guy. So if it's not him, it's um, it's UK for just Louisville or sports because you know it's pretty big down here in Kentucky. Screw that. But, I know. In better news for <laughs> some gamers or not, um, the Oculus Rift has shipped for pre-orders. So it is officially, as of today, from what I understand, today is the 13th of July. Today's the 14th. No, sir. You're all right. Yes, <laughs> as of yesterday. As of yesterday, I'm sorry. Um, I got my days all screwed up. I'm off tomorrow. I'm excited. I'm going to enjoy my day. I'm going to get some work done. But yes, as of yesterday, the Oculus Rift has shipped for pre-orders, which means they're finally going to be on the floor of people's houses, on their faces, all over the place. So we're going to see some videos, some reviews, probably a whole bunch of 
crap popping up about the Oculus. So I'm excited to see what they say. Uh, we'll probably bring it back up during next week's episode, depending on how things go, how it trends. Uh, um, I, I wish I had bought stock in Facebook. But here's the thing. I thought this was already out. There's beta. It, 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 it was out, but they've been having supply train issues. Supply issues. They hadn't been getting too much into details on this because it's the kind of situation where if we go into details, we have to start throwing suppliers for our parts under the bus in public, and then they'll stop supplying us our parts, which makes it hard to fulfill the pre-orders. So let's just fulfill the pre-orders and then maybe quietly negotiate deals for ultimate <laughs> suppliers well, later. But what is the thing? It, isn't Oculus a DRM now? No. No? Um, so what it was... I actually looked up about this. They were talking about this in the Giant Bombcast. Um, what, what was going on is they ha- do have their own Oculus store, but previously if you wanted to play games on the Oculus store, you had to run an additional program on an intermediary layer or something like that um, for, alter- for alternate HD headsets. The problem was is the, so- the uh, Oculus store software interpreted it as cheat software, which is a big deal because one of the Oculus games is Eve Valkyrie, which is a multiplayer game. Mm-hmm. And there actually have been people who were cheating at Eve Valkyrie. So um, basically this led to, okay, well, we're going to uh, change how the Oculus Store works to block intermediary software. And this in the process blocked the previous... Um, I forget the name of the program, but they blocked this program. They've since fixed the Oculus Store, so this program will run. It's, it's basically whitelisted, um, while still making it harder to cheat in um, Eve Valkyrie or any other VR multiplayer game. Hmm. Okay, so I can use I can still use um what's it H does it HTC something something HTC Vibe. Yes. Mm-hmm. Can I can I still use that at the Oculus Rift store? I believe so. There's a, there's a, there's still this third party program you have to run okay. for the process, but you can run it with that program. Okay, because I um, I want one. Is either Oculus Rift or HTC or well, I'm definitely going to get PlayStation version, obviously. But I'm still I'm still debating which one to get. Yeah, um, I know that the. I have to say, I did watch a guy run into his table playing the um, HTC Vive. Yeah, um, it looked painful. Yeah, Th- that is the problem with the Vive and trying to do the whole full room experience. Is you get is unless you've got everything moved out of the way properly, you get the full trip over your Ottoman experience. Yeah, not fun. No boy. I no. gotta. I gotta say though that I think. I think the Oculus Rift uh, took too long to come up. Uh, they let the competition, you know, pretty much uh, be there with them at the same time. I think if they would have done stuff much faster, they would have been positioned so much better than what they are right now. Yeah, and here's the incident. You bring up a really good point, and it's really interesting to me because the Oculus Rift, I feel, I could be wrong, really started the boon of VR tech. Yes, it like, did. They were the ones that really were like, we can do this. We have the technology. We can make it exactly. better. We can make it stronger. Yeah, but that, they, that's, what, that's what I'm saying. They were the first ones, but they were, you know, they took way too long to come up with prototypes, way too long to come out to uh, the masses. Uh, I, think, I think they fucked it up with that. Yeah, it's um, really interesting. Well, I'd rather that we got a prototype that worked than a prototype that was kind of crappy and didn't have people necessarily want to play the VR games uh, because ultimately what what makes what, what will cause this wave of VR to last if it lasts at all is if the technology works if people are able to play games without getting horrifically motion sick and the game experiences are fun as opposed to the old VR mall kiosk things from the 90s. Um, yeah, but, 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 but I, I, I mean, I agree that yep. it's cool if they come up with a working prototype and a much, much better one. The thing is, what I'm saying is that they had, they were first uh, yep. on this wagon for a long, actually for like a year or so. They were the first ones that... Uh, the only you know, ones. 
Yeah, the only ones. The first ones and the only ones. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, I I get that the, they need to come up with something that works as it should be. Problem is, uh, you know, all the competition is now here. You know, they well, were not even the first ones uh, on market, even even after having that much uh, advantage over everyone else. Yeah, I want to um, add on to that though, because um, I think we should look at the companies that are out first. Because I think it's less about having the quality product, because I think all of them, I've tested out a half of the products. I haven't tested the Oculus, and I haven't tested out the Vive. But let's look at the companies. We have Samsung. Yep. They manufacture phones, TVs, all kinds of electronics. We have Sony. We already know what they do. We have, uh, god damn it, uh, the Vive, uh, St- uh, Valve. They manufacture a lot of software HTC and games. HTC is the manufacturer of, of the... Of yeah, the HTC. Thank you. HTC, and which they manufacture technology as well, electronics. And then we have the Oculus, which is a... Uh, not third party, but they're kind of an independent who's funded by Facebook and the people. And you have this company, this company right here, Oculus. They aren't a professional manufacturer. They're a bunch of people who develop the software. They didn't... They're not experts on mass producing the software. And this is speculatory, so I don't know who the people are that make these. But from what I understand, um, they weren't like a huge corporation before the no. Oculus came out. No, so they, no they weren't. They weren't. But again, he, here's the thing, right? I can't, yeah. I guess they're not good at uh, mass manufacturing, but they can go to a third party to manufacture this. They can, mm-hmm. they can, they can go there that route. They, there's a lot of like. Uh, you have Foxconn, the most famous one. Uh, you have Plextronics. You have Samina. You have Celestica. There's a lot of different manufacturers that uh, will work with you, and that they actually can have their own design team work with you and try to get that design and uh, out of the out of uh, out of the gates and mass manu- manufacture. I mean, they can go different routes. But the problem I see is that they again, they were first and they were there, the only ones for oh. quite a long time. I'll, I'll I'll say as a kind of uh, as a uh, on a similar thought that we're kind of in opposition is forming those connections and forming up that development chain takes a lot of time and a lot of work, particularly if you don't have that infrastructure in face in place in the first place. Uh, looking I went looking over the other companies, um, Sony, Samsung, HTC. The key thing here is all is this this sounds minor. But it, it means a lot. Is all of these are companies who develop, manufacture, and sell computerized devices with screens, um, which means they already have the infrastructure, the technology, the development processes, processes and the R and D development processes and infrastructure in place to develop all these screen, screens, to get them to work, not just have them in existence, but have them in a form that you can mass produce and still function at all the levels that you need. And oh, yeah, I agree. I agree. I mean, they and, have that. Because uh, there, um, there was a great episode of the uh, Harmonix podcast I listened to um, back when they were talking about how when they, around Rock Band 3, I think it was when they were, either Rock Band 2 or Rock Band 3, when they were manufacturing their own, handling the manufacture of the Rock Band guitars themselves, hmm. of all the hoops they had to jump through just to get through the process of making the manufacturing guitars themselves. Because everyone else they'd worked with before and afterwards were companies who had existing infrastructure for manufacturing controller peripherals. Red Octane was doing that before. They'd had a background in developing controller peripherals. And with... Um, Rock Band 3, or, or Rock Band 4, and on, they've been working with Mad Cats. Same thing. Mad Cats has been making controllers for forever. Um, and so for Rock... And, and so what Harmonix had to do is they had to basically broker all these manufacturing deals, set up quality control procedures deal with all these suppliers completely 100% from scratch and to a certain degree completely redesign their guitar even though this was a guitar design that they'd been using before and they'd tried and tested for all these other games. Um, so, there's all, so there's a lot of crap they had to deal with there. And yeah, but, when you're dealing with something, with something infinitely more complex than the uh, than a guitar control, than a plastic instrument, then there's a whole bunch more delays and stuff there, and a lot more 
places in the chain where things can screw screw up. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention related to this, and also the other point I wanted to bring up is, I think this level of competition, if if VR is going to survive, then having this much level level competition is vital for doing that. So while I, I agree that um, heart, that uh, Oculus is kind of getting burned in the long run for taking so long to get mass produced, um, they are definitely um, it, it, it's it's not hurting VR as an industry. In fact, I'd say it's probably helping. We'll see. No, I, I mean, again, I think uh, I'm not uh, trying to root for Oculus to do it <laughs> first ones, whatever. Uh, I, I agree that at the, the long run for us, I mean, is that it works, right? That it works fine. If it makes any sense to have it. Now, that said, I, I think, again, yes, there's a lot of things that can go wrong. Uh, there's a lot of things that they can, uh, the Oculus could have... Um, you know, eventually work kinks out, and they become eventually much more knowledgeable. Again, I don't. I think the amount of time it took for them, it it, it just it just fucked them over. Uh, they could again, they could have outsourced mo- uh, you know most of this stuff to people that are actually in business for that. Again, people like uh, that, that I've already said, right? Samina full story. They already they all have their own uh, uh, design R and D people. I can work with you, and uh, you know, help you manufacture these parts. They already have plants all over the world to do this, and they can help you with that. Yes, there's a lot of problems that can happen, but if you can outsource this, and then eventually during that process learn from it, and then you eventually uh, take the reins of the R&D for the, for manufacturing, that's the way. That's the road they could have gotten. I think mm-hmm. they took too long to do that. I think they wanted to. Uh, have a cake and eat it too, and uh, yeah. bite him in the ass. I think in the end, it really boils down to lack of experience. Um, yeah. They they had a great idea and just haven't implemented it fast enough. That said, we have yet to see how the numbers are going to be if uh, if they sell better or what's going to go on. So yeah, as, people are I'm, saying that HTC Vive is much better though. Yeah. Yes, I'm hearing that too. Yeah. So I, I'm curious to see. Um, I'm gonna wait. Before I buy any of them, I'm probably going to wait until about Christmas time, and I'm sure they're going to have some deals, and I'll probably get the one that has a better deal or well, or You have better to wait until you have a, a good enough computer to run it. Oh, I well, got one. Well... Oh, you got one. When I, when I, I just get one. the one... Just get the one that's on... Just get the one that's coming out for the PS4. Uh, the more... I feel it's too limited. I feel it's too limited. Yeah. I want I, I want to get it. and it's not, I'm not knocking it, because that's one of the ones that I've tried. But I feel it's limited because it's a console game. PC games, there's just unlimited possibilities because of modifications, because of how fast you can put out games, how fast you can update them. Morpheus is good, but I I, I just want to wait a little longer before I think about getting that one over Whoa. the PC version. Yeah, it's not going to be as good as an HTC Vive. That's for that, I have to agree. Well, that's because I'm getting the PlayStation 4, was it Elite? Yeah, the Neo thing, whatever. Yeah, I'll just get the Neo then. It's still not gonna be <laughs> as good as having that on, a, on a computer. Uh, and actually, somebody has um, written software. I uh, heard about this on the Giant Bombcast. What? It, no, it's the Beast Giant Beastcast. Same site. Um, what it does is it runs. If it precisely in the software, what basically it does is it takes any game that is a, that involves a three-dimensional environment in it, like for example your Tomb Raider, your Fallout your deus ex, whatever, and tweaks the camera to make it a uh, VR-compatible game. Hmm. Um, it does require some pretty beefy um, processing under the hood to make this work. Um, and it's obviously not optimized for necessarily VR for the full range of looking around and stuff hmm. that you get in VR. But it is something where, like, okay... I have my Oculus headset, I have my um, HTC Vibe, and I already own a copy of Tomb Raider. I already own a copy of Fallout. I already own a copy of Deus Ex. I can, I'll try playing it this way. It doesn't mean it'll necessarily work the way you want it to. Um, it doesn't mean necessarily that, that all the bugs are worked out, and that, for example, if in a game that, trans- that um, shifts back and forth between first and third person, like, for example, Deus Ex does... 
how Deus Ex Human Revolution does, it doesn't mean that you'll end up that you won't end up getting like horrifically motion sick at some point during the transitions or whatever. Um, but it could be an interesting experience. Hmm. Well, all right then. We shall see. Um, I'm going to try to shoot through a few of these topics real quick because I just want to at least bring them to the people's attention and then we'll get on. Uh, the first being, I believe starting tomorrow is Saturday, um, one ESPN Friday. is going to be... Huh? Friday. Okay. Tomorrow's Friday. <laughs> tomorrow tomorrow is Saturday. Um, no, tomorrow's Friday. Yeah, I know. You say Saturday. Yeah, tomorrow, tomorrow. tomorrow or Saturday. Tomorrow, tomorrow, okay. tomorrow, tomorrow or Saturday. You got me confused here, bro. You got me confused. <laughs> so tomorrow, tomorrow, is tomorrow is Saturday. Um, Evo starts. Is it tomorrow? Tomorrow's, tomorrow. Tomorrow Evo starts. So Evo, if you don't know, it's a huge fighting game event. They're going to have all kinds of games, not just Street Fighter Five, Jared, but all kinds of fighting games. I know, uh, they'll have better ones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, like Mortal Kombat 10, right? There, yes, Mortal Kombat 10 will be there. Uh, Street Fighter 4... Um, King of Fighters will be there. Guilty Gear will be there. Yeah, and the, one of the big things that I wanted to bring up is that this is going to be aired on ESPN. A mm. Street Fighter Final is going to be aired on ESPN, yes. but just a Street, Street Fighter Final, Final yes. on ESPN Two. Yeah. Um, so, so it, it, it's being shown on the ESPN channel that once upon a time showed the Magic: The Gathering World Championships. Oh, really? Be shown in ESPN yes. Eight. Way back in the day, like late nineties. Yeah. ESPN2 showed the Magic the Gathering World Championships. I mm -hmm. actually watched it. It was kind of interesting. Um, the, the thing that ESPN had over like the official Magic the Gathering tournament streams and stuff is that they did a really good job of, on a presentation standpoint of kind of explaining how the rules worked to a audience who was inexperienced or what rules tweaks from previous iterations were. And also doing a good job of showing what the car of displaying what cards were, and that's sort of thing give you time to look on screen and see what the text was. Mm -hmm. Like it's something that Magic: The Gathering play doesn't quite gotten as well, and you can't do without like a World Poker Tour level presentation budget, with like oh well we have we have the little camera under the thing or whatever, so we can see what's in the person's hand. Uh, and that sort of stuff. And I had a question. How did he treat um, the commentary? Was it like golf, or was it something exciting like um, a race, like a horse race? It was kind of. It was. It was kind of at the golf level uh, in terms of, um, not not like the the super fast paced horse play, horse race <laughs> stuff. Because I mean, just because it's it's a slower paced game, um, mm -hmm. and. The peaks and valleys are kind of more strategic. There's no like sudden. There there are no bursts of rapid action in Magic: The Gathering, um, like there are in football or baseball or um, any other like conventional sport. Yeah. Well, it, 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 it treated like it was Yu-Gi-Oh virtual reality thing with all those virtual holocons. Then it would be interesting. Yeah, it, it's if you've watched World Poker Tour commentary, it's kind of like that general tone and cadence. I yeah. don't understand poker, so no. Well, it, it's it's you don't have to un understand poker. It's just you've watched any World Poker Tour stuff, like and just listen to how the announcers talk. It's kind of like that. Yeah, mm. and I Street Fighter should be commentated very differently, more so like a. Uh, I would say a boxing match or a martial arts match like MMA. And yeah, like, I, like UFC, yeah. Yeah. Now, what are talking about? It's going to be like this. He presses the kick button. Oh, he throws a fireball. No. Oh, he's jumping. Oh, and it's over. This is the most exciting Street Fighter V match we've seen in a very long time. So Thanks for joining that. ESPN2. This has been the Street Fighter Finals. Uh, My name is Igor. Thank you. But then to be like, oh my gosh, it's a cat fight. That bitch is going to slap that bitch. Oh my uh, gosh. E e ESPN, e ESPN, I like to think, even if it's something that is sort of a niche thing, mm -hmm. like fighting, like esports and fighting games, what I'll say I learned from when they covered the Magic the Gathering match is even if perhaps only the smallest fraction, like a fraction of a percent, of the ESPN2 audience actually watched that show, they still hired announcers and trained them to in, in 
how magic works and did a presentation where it's clear that they gave a fuck in what they were present what they were presenting and what they were showing. And I don't think there is anything when it comes to the actual commentary of an ESPN event, the commentary, not necessarily how it's covered on any of their other programming, hmm. where they, where the announcers give a fuck about what they're covering. Now, Sports yep. Center, they will crack all kinds of really stupid jokes about Street Fighter, um, and kind of put it down, probably. Um, but you need to remember, you need to remember though, you can't pay anybody enough to give a shit about Street Fighter Five. But anyways, anyways, my 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 thought is this, uh, and yes, I agree with with uh, Chris. With me, I don't care. You. I know. Yep. Fighting game commentators are are some of the most hype people ever, and, and fighting games are very hype. But there's also very intricate things that people who have a lower level of intelligence, Jared, <clears throat> don't get about fighting games. <laughs> so I'm worried that, and I, and I don't. I Excuse me. That. Excuse me. You want to talk about fighting game intelligence, Mister? Oh, uh, there's only I only can't. I, I'm supposed to come up with a list of top ten uh, Street Fighter females, and he uh, came up with four. Four. Five. Oh, five. Oh, five. Five. After I gave you one. God. No. Jim Lee and Cammy better be on there. He's like, I can't Are come up with any more. I don't know any more. And then I gave him a list of like. 12 or 13, just off the cuff of my hand. So, yeah, who knows more? God. Like, yeah, and that's the way you like them. <laughs> <laughs> but no, look, my concern is, my concern is this, is that they, they won't really, it's hard to convey the complexity of a fighting game to someone who hasn't played it. So, while I am excited for this, I, I'm also concerned that it won't be translated very well, unless they have someone like uh, James Chen. I've been introduced to him by multiple people. I think Chris was actually one of the people that put me onto him, and he he's good enough to explain the game in layman's terms for people who don't play it understand, but also in depth enough for people who do already appreciate the art to really enjoy themselves and be hyped while doing it. It is a hard job to to commentate something well, so complex. That 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 is what that is what the color commentator's job is for ultimately, yeah. in in any sporting event or or venue. That is what Madden. That's what John Madden's job was on Monday Night Football. Was to play the was, was to convey the complexity of, of football, of American rules football, in um, layman's terms. Um, hence all the drawing on the the what the fuck ever. I forgot. The, and so they'll probably hire someone like James Chen to do co- to do color commentary for ESPN 2's um, coverage, and then they'll probably have their own ESPN guy or something. It. I don't know, but they'll they'll, ha- they'll have the balance there. Uh, of someone to provide the in-depth, more analysis of what's going on, and explain that in layman's terms, while also having someone just call moves and say, "Oh, that's a um, Shinku Hadoken. That's <laughs> a," <laughs> um, and they'll probably have instant replays and stuff, and they'll probably have cameras on pointing at the hands of the. Uh, although they will probably definitely have cameras on the hands of the players and their arcade sticks. That'd be interesting. Um, That'd be interesting. Because tournaments have not done that in the past, but a lot of YouTubers who go to the tournaments do do that for their own like tutorials and stuff. So that'd be interesting. As, if, if I was ESPN, if I was running ESPN's coverage, it's like okay for these for our presentation because there is activity here, and this has the activity that has direct impact on what's happening on the screen. I'm going to put a camera on these people's hands, or picture, or, or, or putting these pictures hand, putting at their hands. Even if it's like a go, a, a, a GoPro, um, hooked up to an external feed or something like that. A GoPro with the audio, out, with the video out, um, for picture in picture, showing what each player's hands are doing. Because I know what their faces are. Their faces are going to be really intent and not necessarily doing much in terms of reaction. Until they pop so off. That's what they call it, the pop-off. Where they're just like, yeah, yeah it, it, it'll, it'll the pop-off. And yes. they'll probably have that too. But they'll, they'll, try, but they'll want to show what people's hands are doing because um, that is where the biggest flurry of activity is going to be. Yeah, that's, that's a really good point. I hadn't really thought about that. Most people who watch it don't really... We care, but we rather watch the actual fight. We're too busy trying to take in that knowledge. The chat's going off. But I am going to neither confirm nor deny if Poison is going to be on my list. Okay, I'm not saying. 
You'll have to wait until the video's out. All right. Oh, I just figured out who I just figured who, <laughs> just figured out who poison is. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, yes, it belongs on the list. We we have spent enough time on this topic. Um, we gotta get on to the next one, which this is pretty. I don't know how I feel about this. I want to know what you guys think about this because I'm torn. But Nintendo or somebody, I'm assuming Nintendo is launching a mini version of Nintendo. Is this is officially licensed from Nintendo. Okay, it's going to have 30 licensed games on there, including Legend of Zelda, Donkey Kong, uh, Kirby's Adventure, Metroid, uh, and other games as well. So it's inter- It's a miniature version of the Nintendo. It has two controller ports. I don't know what those are, but obviously they're not the old school controllers. They're mm-hmm. something else. But this is really interesting because they're already pre-installed, but you have the exact look of the old Nintendo you have this nostalgia factor. Uh, I, I especially want to know what Antonio and Tyler think about this one because these guys are our retro people. So well, I'd like to know what you guys what think. What am I, chopped liver? <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. 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 Retro. Here's the thing. Too, too modern for us, man. Too modern. So to me, I do not care for this at all. If I can't play this on it, I don't care for it. Yeah, that is my objection as well. Um, is like Sega has been doing their little retro clone consoles, which I've seen like at department stores like Fred Meyer, and they Dude, have a bunch of games. They, they bunch suck. Of games, they, they suck. But they here's suck. the thing. But here's the thing. They have a bunch of games pre-installed, and they have a car, a functional cartridge slot. But it doesn't play all games. I agree. I agree. It is. It, 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 it's I mono think... and no stereo. Yeah, I, I, I agree. It is not without its faults. I prefer my Retron 5 to yes. any of those retro clone consoles, to, to, to anything like those little cheap Sega things. But it is a gateway. It is a gateway where it where it's not just, oh, we have a whole bunch of games pre-installed. It's, we have a bunch of games pre-installed, and then you can go get more. You can go play more. And then when you run into the situation of, oh, this game doesn't work. Oh, I want better sound. You can then go, all right, I'm going to spend the money now on the Retron 5 or a Retro Duo, or another Retro Clone console, which has HDMI out, which has mm-hmm. S-Video out, which has compo- um, component out, and hook those up to my television, and then start expanding into more and more different types of consoles. Yes. And this doesn't have that. This has no way, to my knowledge, to expand the game selection. It doesn't even have an SD card slot. It's not network-enabled. It's, it, like... Even if this was something where it's like, okay, it's network enabled and taps into the Wii U virtual console mm-hmm. um, marketplace, if it was that, I'd be willing to cut them some slack. Because I... then it's yeah, because then it's thirty games plus the option to purchase more and plus ability to take to do uh, suspend saves and all this other additional functionality beyond just playing these thirty games. But this I, is I think... I this is the equivalent. This is a more flashy equivalent of the Intellivision or Atari Twenty Six Hundred Activision joystick that plugs into the the, the El Cheapo compo- composite inputs at the front of your TV. That's racist. Yeah, yeah but I think I'm like not El Cheapo, point. but you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Just cheapo. <laughs> Cheapomatic. What I'm right. missing, but I think you guys are missing the point. I think this is not for us or people close to nearly as what we do, what we like. Uh, yes, of course it would be much better to have a uh, freaking slot because that way, as you guys said, you can just buy more games to do it. But I think this is going to tap into people that remember the NES era and say, hey, look at that. It's by my Nintendo. I'm just going to get one. And most of these people that do it so casually like this, they are not going to go buy more games. Uh, I'm telling you guys, they are not going to go and buy NES cards and track, you know, to just to try to remember. They will buy this thing, they will play it four times, say, hi, oh, yeah, this is funny, I remember that, and they go and collect dust. Yeah. Uh, people like us, we already have all the consoles that we need. We already have all the ways to play the games. This is not going to be for us. It, I mean, there are, of course, a lot of people like us are going to buy it, mostly, mostly because of the uh, collectability of the thing, but that's it. I mean, you're not gonna you're not gonna <coughs> buy this to go and play your games. You already have them. You already have so many different ways to play it. You already have the original hardware. This is not for us. I, I, I think I think that's it. I think that's the issue with this. I think we're looking at this in like, in our lenses, and I think it is for us. This is the thing. They should release the the classic controller for the Wii U or maybe the NX. 
that's all I'm saying. So they can go to the what the Nintendo store and just buy the games. Well, that's different. Though. I'm, not I'm not really. I'm, I'm definitely <laughs> okay. Antonio on this one. There you go. I'm going to put my two cents in on this. All right? You need to view it as this. We, as our generation, collecting and played these games, yes. I don't think this is for our generation. This is for the people who picked up a Nintendo Wii for the first time. These are for the original, the the younger people. These are this this is for like my daughter who's five years old. This is something in even for us as console people and collectors to purchase and say, here's a console with thirty games on it. It only retails for fifty nine ninety nine. So here's thirty games that I can give to my daughter on a console that she can play in her room and not mess up my originals. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, but wait, but That's wait. That's what I'm but, saying. It's but, not for us. But daddy, why can't you just emulate it? It'll she save you money. Emulation is. She might. Shut up. She doesn't. <laughs> In any uh, case, yeah. I mean, a lot of people, you, said, not you said for kids nowadays, they're going to say you could just download it and emulate it. No, but they're going to ask if it's on their cell phone. Generation. <laughs> I think. I think that's I, yes. This a lot of new generation people will enjoy this. Much better, and 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 they probably. What I think it's gonna be actually our generation that's gonna buy more of this. But like us, fathers trying to give it to our sons and daughters, uh, and a lot of people that are not crazy like us, right? They collect this stuff, but do remember playing the NES with uh, you know with nostalgia. But they don't wanna go out and buy all these things and spend all this much money. And they yeah. say, oh, you know what? Fucking a, I can do it with see, for sixty dollars. It's gonna have 30 games. Oh, that's pretty cool. They'll mm-hmm. buy it again. They'll play it three times, and that's it. None of those guys, I, I tell you, are gonna go and say, "If only it had a fucking slot, I'll go buy more games." No. Yes. They, yeah. They so, will, people like that already have what what they need to do. It. I don't. Yeah. Think, I don't think. I, I don't think that. I, I guess what what I'd prefer. I know again, this isn't for me. Um, yeah. but what what I'd prefer is even if it didn't have a slot. Is even if it just had okay, it has Wi-Fi, so you can connect to the Nintendo Wii U um, store, you know, the, the Wii U Virtual Console store. And okay, I've played all 30 of these games. I'd like some more, and get games that way, or just an SD card slot or something where you could like buy I... Virtual Console <coughs> games through the PC. Transfer them to an SD card and take them to the device because I, I know, or, or, or in the case of what will actually happen, the, um, someone will come up with custom firmware for this. You can easily load in an SD card, stick it on your, stick it into the thing, jailbreak it, and now you can play emulated games. Yeah, that's what I was about to say actually, <laughs> but you, you said it first. Yeah, but again, 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 this is not for us. And here's here's a lot of things there yep. that I don't think that I think why this never make the cut. First of all, cost. Right, adding a Wi-Fi module, adding all these services to it, it will cost them money. It will make this thing uh, go to close to the eighty dollars range, where I think the sweet spot is between thirty and sixty. Right, that's the sweet spot. I, I, I think they announced sixty actually. Well, that's what I'm saying. That's the sweet mm-hmm. spot for this particular. I, I don't think the Wi-Fi module would cost that much more. But that's not only the mark the Wi-Fi module. There's a lot of things that you have to develop for the thing in order to it to work and connect to the Nintendo uh, servers and just download it from there. Uh, the servers are already there, but the whole thing of having the program and everything serviced there to is is already cost. That's what I'm yeah. saying. It will make the thing much much. Well, uh, much more uh, cost, uh, uh, not that well cost efficient. Yeah. Here's what I think, well, though. Here's here, here my question. Actually, we'll determine for how much it would cost or not. Is is what is it? Is we and we don't have an answer for this yet. Is what is it running? What is this thing running on? Is this running on? Because this is this is an officially licensed Nintendo device. Um, I think actually it might be possibly being sold by Nintendo them, Nintendo directly themselves, even if they're going, even if a third party is the one manufacturing this. Is this just running on some sort of knockoff of the Android operating system or some clone of the Android operating system, like what the Retron 5 is running as? In which case, yeah, there's the additional cost of developing something to talk to the Android marketplace. If this is running on some, on the other hand, some modified version of the operating system from um, the Wii U or the Wii, then 
this process just got then you don't have as many hoops to jump through to design the different interface or whatever. Well, you got to remember that the storefront. In order to be able to run stuff like that, you will have to have better hardware in it. It will make the cost higher. Yes, you can. You can run the whole you, thing. You have to have a menu to select your game in the select what there's the 30 games in the first place anyway. It's not like there's a manual dial on the back. You're selecting. You're turning to Twitch. Yeah, to but you game. can have it, it, a much it's... lower CPU in in hardware itself just to make a, a cool enough uh, menu, and that's it. In order for you to have more stuff running and be able to run stuff from uh, the uh, the internet, you have to add a, more, a bit more RAM. You have to add a bit more of a power CPU. You, you you have to add stuff. You know, stuff that adds into it. And I think yeah. it was a very conscious decision because at the end of the day, I get it. I mean, for us, for me, it would be much. This would be a great idea to have all of that stuff. But yeah. it's a conscious decision to do that because the market will not be there. If you spend more money on R&D and all these components to make this thing more uh, costly, to the public that are not going to be using that, uh, and that that I that I don't think it's the market for. And that's and that's so, why I, I, hate to, I hate to interrupt you guys because uh, you both have good points. Um, well, I I do agree with with Antonio and Jared, um, and, and definitely with the money they're making, the margin. But we got two of the big topics to to get to before we get to the end of the show. So uh, one last. One last point to get to, to make, make real quick, and I happen to glance at the game lineup. And one of the games they have on there is Star Tropics. And so... But not the sequel. Not the sequel. But here's the thing that, that, that had me thinking about that is because for Star Tropics on the Virtual Console, they had the little information thing on there for the content, for that oh. one that you have to wet down the manual. Yes, yes, I remember so, that. So here's where it gets tricky. Because if for Star Tropics, either they have physical printed documentation, in, either documentation on a pamphlet in with the box that has that information, or you have to have a uh, interface that is advanced enough for each game to have the manual information in there, like the stuff that's taken, like they have in Virtual Console, to present the information so you can have. Okay, I'm accessing the manual to find the frequency. To complete this puzzle in Star Tropics, so I can actually continue in the game. Or well, they if, won't have I, any I, of that and just yeah, let I the don't think it would do it for out. just one game. Yeah, well, one one game. but let's let's get on let's get on to the yeah. next topic. Um, but uh, one okay. thing though, one thing that we need to address: <laughs> hopefully, <laughs> hopefully the controller is as good as the original. If that happens, I I'll be. It, it's not. It's gonna be cheap. It's gonna be break. Hopefully, once you get it. I haven't hopefully. seen a picture of the controller yet. I oh, just put I put a link in the official Nintendo dot com. Oh yeah, has the yeah, yeah. official page of it shows that it's official licensed product, and that you guys have to remember. And I just want to throw this in there. Hate to go out, you know, stay on this topic, but like Antonio is right. The more they add to it, the more costly it's going to be. I mean, Antonio could make right now, I bet, a Nintendo console out of a Raspberry. One of those Raspberry IP oh, easily, things. Easily. Easily. Uh, easily. And the cost of that would be still more expensive than this. If you were to add in the SD slot, the um, the network adapter, the controller port, or whatever the case is, and it would still, to be that size, it would still cost more than what it would be. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's, I, I've, I've got to agree. Right, that's yeah. why you buy the yeah. Wii U system. Yes, I've, I've, I've got to shut, shut you guys down. Yeah, i got to shut you guys down on this one. Uh, we, <laughs> we, we might have to talk why. about this in the future. We talk too, about the future. too silly, move on to the next but, sketch. But I, I will... <laughs> it's, it's hard because there's two topics I wanted to talk about, but we won't have time for both of these tonight. So we'll, we'll save Pokemon Go for next week. I'm sure there's going to be tons more stuff to talk about, so we'll get to that. But, um, so we're going to talk about Street Fighter V and how disappointing it was again. <laughs> <laughs> We've already killed that horse. Sorry, <laughs> that horse has been beaten. But but the no. horse is still alive. No, this is a topic that I, I actually wanted to avoid uh, for a number of reasons. But it's uh it, it's been brought up a couple times, and I've seen it all over the place. And so I figure we'll talk about it a little bit, and hopefully it doesn't turn into a debate because I'm actually for the person that they're accusing of, which I'm not for his YouTube channel. But the it's it's about uh, PewDiePie and actually a bunch of other YouTubers. Yes. And if you don't know. Uh, yeah, I know. I, I didn't want to talk about this topic, but um, it, it's actually a good topic to talk about uh, for a number of reasons. Um, and so essentially, I'll, I'll give the short version of this. Uh, a while ago, PewDiePie 
did a video for the game called uh, Lord of the Rings Shadows of Mordor, which I've actually just started playing. That's a fantastic-ass game, so this is even more annoying to me. But uh, essentially, they're, they're giving him a bunch of shit because he did a sponsored video where they're saying that he did a paid review of the game but didn't disclose that he did a paid review he of the game. insufficiently disclosed that he had right. been, that he'd been paid. Uh, now, there were other YouTubers who were also paid and does not disclose... Um, yes. But PewDiePie gets the most attention because he is the highest paid YouTuber. He's like one of the biggest YouTubers on YouTube, period. Not he just is gamer the YouTuber. biggest YouTuber on YouTube. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and so a lot of people are giving him shit because um, they said that he didn't properly disclose his information. And I do want to say that uh, the the like legalities or the, the stipulations of a sponsor were a little bit more gray when he did this video. This was in 2014. They changed the policy in 2015. But even then, he did he did say that it was a sponsored video. But another thing um, that I wanted to bring up is that he doesn't do reviews. He just nope. does list plays. Let's... So, um, I, I wanted to know what you... When, uh, Alex, you had a very strong opinion, opinion about this, and I want to know uh, a couple of your, your thoughts, and then I'll, okay. I'll share it with mine. So... As someone who ha so I've actually done I've not done videos for pay but I have done videos with provided content from a person. Um, I did my review of the Acre Monster Chronicles and my review of the Short Life of Charles Beaumont. Well, well, the DVDs for those were both provided by the filmmaker. Um, and the thing which got PewDiePie and Warner Brothers in trouble, primarily Warner Brothers, was the disclosure was not just in the show notes. But whether the, the, or the disclosure was just in the show notes as opposed to in the show notes and in the video itself. And I get where this is coming from, and I get why the FCC made this ruling, or the FTC made this ruling, particularly for the, um, the when they did revise the rules to clarify things. Because the fact of the matter is with YouTube is you can embed a YouTube video absolutely anywhere, and wherever you embed it, those show notes don't go. Um, and so... If you, those show notes are gone, are missing, then we run into the situation with um, where it is not necessarily clear to the person watching the video. This is embedded on some other site um, that oh, this is actually a paid video, and there are other concerns because this happened. This I think what makes the whole PewDiePie thing a bigger deal is this happened around the same time as the CS:GO gambling controversy happened, um, and where. You have cases like that where you had an in, a failure to disclose the connection between the person doing people doing the videos, and the and the site, and the fact that, and so there is that level of disingenuousness. And even if they had disclosed in the comments, um, or in the show notes that they were connected, affiliated to the site, and that they were either owners of the site or had been paid by the owners of the site. If, they, if that information, if that video had been embedded somewhere else, that information about the connection would not have necessarily been clear, and the whether or not the video was disingenuous was disingenuous would be, again, not clear. PewDiePie he wears his emotions on his sleeve, so it's a little less clear there. If you know PewDiePie, you can generally figure out whether or not he's being phony or not on something. If you watch his videos, I don't watch his stuff. Um, as far as for an ideal way to do this, if I was to point a YouTube uh, video producer in the audience or watching this video for good best practices on this, um, Gerard the Completionist on his uh, Super Beard Bros channel, when they do sponsored videos, um, they do a different heading for those under Super, Sol Super Sellout Bros, um, as well as saying, hey, this is a sponsored video in the video and all this other stuff. And it, it, does, they, does a really good job of making it clear beyond the shadow of a doubt, this is a sponsored video. And, and if you choose to watch it, you know up front what you're getting into. There's no possibility for doubt or question for doubt over whether this person has received money or been rec or gotten recompense for their what they're showing on their video. Right. So what I want to re reiterate, um, in the video that you sent me, though, was that he he basically said, one, he did put it down there. He said he could have been more upfront about it. But he did also say that what his formula is now for how he does his sponsored videos now is he says it, out, he says it verbally now. Um, to go back to what I was saying before is this was 2014 where it was gray. And I do want to point out that this guy 
isn't a professional game reviewer or a professional YouTuber. He's just a dude that made a bunch of videos and became like a hit sensation. He's not like uh, he he could have educated himself since then and probably has because he does actually seem like a smart guy even though he acts stupid about ninety percent of the uh, goddamn time. He, he does the videos for a living now, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, he makes a lot of money. He makes uh, I assume I from what I understand from what I've seen in the numbers, he makes millions of dollars. Yep. Um, and, well, millions and, of dollars before Maker takes their cut. <laughs> right, which is still a lot of money, but he's still a very humble person. So I, I've learned to respect him, even though I don't like his content. Yeah. Um, but he he's not some sort of like entrepreneur. And I feel like and the biggest reason I didn't want to talk about this and why it's not in the title is because a lot of people are using his name as clickbait. A lot of people are just saying his name just because he's the biggest YouTuber on... on well, he's the biggest YouTuber. And so they're using his name to get clicks onto their website, which is not something that I want to do by any means whatsoever. So that's... Then, I can do that. Then, is, then, then, let's not, then let's not do it. <laughs> right. Um, let's say I, Pokemon I, Go, but switch it to PewDiePie. <laughs> right. So, I mean, I probably won't even put in the title when I post this on YouTube because <laughs> I, I, I didn't want to talk about it because it's just a lot of people are trying to use it for clickbait. But I, I did want to defend him because a lot of people are getting on his ass or, or pretending to get on his ass just because he didn't properly... Um, say that he was paid for a video that uh, for a video game that was fucking fantastic. But like, the game is really good. Go play yeah, it. I, 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 I agree. I think... Sorry, go ahead. Uh, go ahead. Oh, just just really quick. I think I I think that the problem here, and I think this is why I'm gonna get in Batavian's uh, uh, side, but it, for a different reason. I think mm. more than just because of the game was so fantastic because the guy he's not a, a reviewer I don't think that's the I don't think he that's his um, uh, defense I think more of that it's the time when it came out when time when it came out this was very 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 new uh, and uh, you know it was not very clear to everyone how this worked so I think more than anything else is that because even though he's not a professional reviewer, he gets so many views. He can impression so many people. Games yeah. that have no, um, you know, reason being popular, he plays them and they become popular, right? So yeah. yes, he's not a video game reviewer. That I don't think that's an excuse. He should at this point I think is very clear to him as well. That he should say at the beginning of every video, or make it clear any other way mm -hmm. that it's not just the show notes, right? That this is a sponsored video because he is the biggest YouTuber there is. He should know better by now. Now that said, again, this was back in 2014 when this was just starting. So I give him a pass just because of that, not because of anything else, honestly. Yeah, uh, see, and that's I, where I think I think you, it's wrong. I think you guys are wrong. Um, in the sense of, <clears throat> I watch a lot of Vanoss Gaming, and he is he has sponsored videos, usually by Ubisoft or EA, and he's it's very, um, it shows up. Hey, we're getting a lot of feedback from Alex here. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> just like a lot of dead air. Um, but um, we, you know, he puts in the video at the very start, hey guys, Vanoss here, um, just let you know that this is a sponsored video by do 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 and he has a whole big thing right on the bottom saying who the sponsor is and everything. And it says, I'd like to thank them for letting us play the game early, blah, 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 blah. Um, here's just some fun stuff that we're doing with the game, do 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 and they go and do it. And that stays on there for, mo for a period of the video. So... You know, it's, to me, <coughs> sorry, to me, it's all about the integrity. And they've been doing that since, fuck, 2012, 2000, you know, when I started watching Vanoss Gaming, right? So in reality, there's there's really no excuse when it comes to the sponsored videos and, you know, oh, how it should be. You should always be upfront about what it is. If someone's paying you to do it, say so. There's always been rules about that, you know, for talk shows and TV and radio, and those rules should have always applied to YouTubers, and YouTube was slow on that whole aspect. You know, shame on them, you know, but if you're smart enough to know, 
to pay attention to that, then you should know that. When we started this, the console explosion, believe me, I know those, I knew those, you know, years ago about what had to be done if we got sponsored for something or any in that or anything in that case. So, you know, it's just for me, it's just a shame on the integrity of the person, you know. Do the homework I, and do what you I need to do you. to to, to always cover your ass. Main thing. I I, I agree. And I, I think to a certain degree, not to dump on dunk on PewDiePie too much, he did bring up that he's gave this attention because he's the biggest um the biggest YouTuber. When you're the biggest YouTuber particularly when you have a younger audience, and PewDiePie's audience tends to skew younger than everyone on this, vi- on this video, um, you have a certain degree of obligation that comes with that in terms, not like, not, not like a lot, but in terms of, okay, if you're doing advertorial content, which is what a, a sponsored video is, um, and particularly considering that with the Warner Brothers advanced notice campaign, they also put a bunch of restrictions on there for what you could or could not say, um, which got leaked even before this whole shitstorm got loose. There is a certain degree of, okay, for purposes of standards and practices, for whether you want to call it standards and practices, whether you want to call it ethics, whether you want to call it uh, journalistic integrity, whether you want to call it just... Um, disclosure and making sure that everyone knows where you stand is important to say I am paid to say this and that can act and what happened? Uh oh. We broke Uh-oh. him. Uh-oh. We he broke, broke him. him. He's frozen. Yeah. Look at that face. While he's doing <laughs> he's <laughs> that face. That's That's that little effect face. how he is. Oh there he's he goes. There he is he's back. I all right. Uh, Okay. So, real, real quick though, um, I want to reiterate. He has since 2014 changed his format and does say at the beginning of the video verbally that he does disclose. Props to him for that. Yes, I agree with Jared 100% that you need to cover your ass. Um, but I will say, where was Warner Brothers? Because they went to YouTubers who aren't professionally trained, like people who know the legalities and know about sponsorships. They were people who were hungry for popularity and money and, and, and just were doing things that they liked and were approached by this big corporation. Where were they with their lawyers saying, this is what you should do legally with your video before we sign this contract to pay for us? Where were they at? I'm not and, saying and, it's their fault. I, I do think he should have covered his ass and looked at his rights. But, like, you have this big company and where everyone's attacking, uh, I almost said PewDie, PewDieTube, I don't know what the fuck I'm thinking, PewDiePie. And... And he actually did disclose this information. He just did it very vaguely. He did it below the fold, which means you have to scroll down to see it. But he did disclose it. There are people who 100% did not disclose anything whatsoever, but everyone's hopping on to hate PewDie- PewDiePie dick. Like, I, I don't, I don't I, I, quite get it. And to, to the credit of the FTC, if you look at the article by Variety, which I don't know that if that one got posted in the chat, um, it make, it is, yes, it did. It makes clear... That the uh, the people who the FTC was nailing and the FTC had to uh, set up a settlement with, or uh, that that settled with the FTC is Warner Brothers because they provided insufficient guidance. Um, we'll see if the FTC next goes after the people running the uh, Counter Strike gambling site. See, but um, the thing is, the thing is, uh, when it comes to sponsored stuff and it comes to all this type of thing, we fall into the same situation of IGN. And whatever fuck Jeff Killian or Jeff Knightley or whatever the fuck his name is Jeff from IGN. Yeah, Killian. him with Doritos and Mountain Dew. Mm-hmm. Oh god. Right? The whole oh, Halo Halo series, the whole Microsoft sponsoring this whole one hour special on Spike T V, but no disclosures or anything. It's the same thing. It's the same idea. It's the same it's just the way the that companies will pay people and, and that have any big audience that they can tap into that's it. That's all it is. And it's really not up to Warner Brothers. It's really not up to Doritos or anything. It's up to those companies who signed to take that money to, again, cover your own ass. You know, yeah, read, yeah. read your own contracts. Know what you're getting yourself into before you sign on the dotted line. Because once you sign on the dotted line, you're, it's all on you. And yeah. yes, I'm glad the FTC went after Warner Brothers you know, for misguidance or whatever, but it really, as I see it and the, their lawyers would see it, it's really not their responsibility. 
They said, here, uh, review this game for us. Here's a bunch of money. Yeah. Right? That's it. Mm -hmm. It's up to you to know what you need to do. And that's how we do it. That's how, you know, we haven't, you know, we haven't been sponsored, but we've been given things and stuff like that um, for different aspects. But, you know, we don't need to disclose because they don't fall in those situations. But, on the other hand, if we did, believe me, we already know what needs to be done. It's just knowing what you have to do as a person and as a business person. And PewDiePie is not dumb to where he, he doesn't have the people behind him that would have told him what to do. You know, to 2014 or fucking even in 2004 is when this stuff probably started really starting, mm. right? You know, you, when you say 2014, this was YouTube was already big. It wasn't just beginning. I mean, YouTube really began to kick off 2008, right? That's when all this stuff started. So, yeah, that's know. my opinion. You know, six mm. years, right? Six, seven years. And, and no one has had the battle. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and that's that's a great point to end this on. Uh, we had a lot more topics, but we actually some great points are made. Um, but yeah, uh, cover your ass, um, learn stuff, and I'll, I'll just add this brief thing just so uh, because I want to say this, I'm gonna probably reiterate it next week during next week's podcast. But uh, if you play Pokemon Go, please don't be stupid. That's that's all I want to say. Don't drive in Pokemon. Don't don't like kill yourself, please. Don't don't get make off my other gamers look. Yes, get <laughs> off Jared's lawn. God damn it! Somebody has a Pokestop. Let them have some privacy. Jeez. And yes, stop creeping in my backyard. Don't make us other gamers look bad by killing yourself or killing others in the process, please. Uh, that would suck, and I don't want to talk about that on the show. So so please don't let that happen. But, but for the people, hang on, I, I got a PSA announcement for the people who yeah. don't have Pokemon Go, who cannot have Pokemon Go on their phone because their phone is older, don't worry. This is a PSA for you. Get yourself some white shirts, white pants, and draw a big R on it and steal a Pokemon trainer's phone. <laughs> Team Rocket looks United. like Team Rocket's blasting off again. <laughs> oh, and, oh, oh speaking of which, during this podcast, my older brother sent me a message, which it says, "Calling all Jennies. Apparently, Pokestops are attacking the criminals varieties from what the news are saying. So here's my solution: us older players, 20 plus years old, should occasionally scout the Pokestops." Um, sort of, sort of like the neighborhood watch, so what we can keep the area safe for the younger trainers. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. There you go. Watch. I'm Sharon Jenny. Caught it. <laughs> but um, get... all right, so we'll go down the line here. We got uh, so many great points, by the way, guys. So thank you for all for joining. First off, but uh, we'll go to Alex, and then we'll go down the line here from what I see, and we'll let you know what you do or let them know what you do and where they can find you. Okay, so um, I have my YouTube... Sure, I, have, I have all sorts of things. My blog, count0or.wordpress.com. Um, let me check my... Sure we have my Let's say that's a lot. Um, <laughs> as your YouTube.com slash user slash count0or um, for my direct YouTube channel. And... Um, I have on, on on those I have the Nintendo Power retrospectives where I'm going through Nintendo Power one issue at a time reviewing every and I have my film reviews and book reviews and so forth on breaking it all down. Um, my most recent video has been a film review of the movie Damnation Alley uh, based on the novel by Roger Zelazny. It is the movie that brought us Rad Scorpions. Um, oh. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it is the movie that brought us Red Scorpions. I also have an ongoing Let's Play that's just started recently of Mass Effect 3. And then next week is part 57 of Nintendo Power Retrospectives. So this week, movie review with Fallout tie in. Next week, old school retro gaming. Bam. All right. Mr. Antonio, good to have you on the show. And where can they find you and what do you do? Uh well they can find me at YouTube at Rocalo Retro Reviews as uh, my name says here so just look at that and just, just click that on the video come on guys it's right. fucking good 
And then you can find me on uh, Twitter at Cocadito, which is also as well here on the thing, like you can see. Um, and so I uh, also on the console explosion where I do, uh, you know, retro video game reviews. Lately, I have not done anything <laughs> because I've been playing Overwatch all day. <laughs> but I'm get I'm getting into it. And 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 we have uh, the video game countries right there, uh, cartoon of Donald Trump. <laughs> nice. All right. And Tyler, where can they find you? What do you do? I uh, okay. I am a YouTuber. I make videos about pretty much anything. And hopefully, I'll be starting to write my next script for my next um. You could say skits. I'm really excited to do this. Uh, other than that, um, I stream for the console explosion every Monday. And I also do a Furry Friday stream every Friday on my YouTube channel, which, by the way, it's it's um, <laughs> the Video Game Hunter, or you can type in Hot Anime 32. Yeah, <laughs> uh, you know, I don't know why it still makes me laugh. Uh, and, yeah. um, <laughs> you can you can also follow me on Twitter, VGH32. Also have a Facebook, the Video Game Hunter, and now, and this is not a paid, um, <laughs> you know, thing. I'm now there's a furry site for furries who love socializing called FurZoo.com. If you're a furry, follow me there. All right. You're mentioning, I you're, am you're, not you're, being paid for this. <laughs> like, when you're mentioning, oh, I have a new thing, I thought you were going to mention, oh, and I have a, and I have a MySpace now. <laughs> no. MySpace. But it's oh, my a, God. Yeah, um, is, is FurZoo is a new... Um, Furry site for like another social network. It's kind of they took Facebook and Twitter together. Only difference oh. is it's meant for furries. There you go. Thank you for spreading awareness for fellow furries. I'm I'm not one, but I I support your choice. <laughs> I don't judge. I don't judge. And Jared, do you have anything else to add on to what you already added on to? Yeah, pretty much. Just make sure you check out console.com. Check out us on, on Twitch. We have streamers every day, Monday to Saturday, pretty much. People streaming different amounts of games. People ranging from the Bearded Gamer, Pickles Gaming, uh, Tyler, <clears throat> and the Video Game Hunter, Black Ace, and yeah, just it's just it's amazing. It's a great community. Um, if you want to be part of the console explosion, hey, shoot us an email. We're always looking for we're always looking for new YouTubers, new streamers, um, new people who want to play Overwatch and be in an esports team. We're looking for that. Um, check us out on Twitter, check us out on YouTube, check us out in Overwatch, because that's where we all play, is pretty much we're in Overwatch. It's uh, Rebirth yeah. Labs. Oh, yeah, it's Overwatch. Oh, yeah. Yes. We're actually going to uh, play Overwatch after this. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. And um, uh, just uh, remember, guys, it's cover your ass or see ya. Yeah. Oh, and no, cover CYA. your ass. I see what you did CYA. Uh, I got am, it. Am I seeing the ass? Yes. If you're okay. looking in a mirror, and yes, you are. <laughs> Damn. That's it's, okay. it's okay, because I'm a furry. We like jackass. Oh, I get it. There's so many puns here. It's ridiculous. Stop Ooh. it. Stop it. All of you. Stop this shit. It's crazy. Anywho. I'm a and said dick. <laughs> I'm the philosopher. It's a furry dick. <laughs> that makes it so much better. I'm going to leave. No. You can find me on Facebook.com slash Philosopher, YouTube at YouTube.com slash The Philosopher, Twitter at The Philosopher. You can also check me out down below, TVNapier.com. That's my real name for guys who don't know. I know. Um, I also do other videos that are gaming-related, um, but you'll, I'll have a new link and a new video up uh, shortly for those who are looking forward to that. But as always, definitely press that like button if you like this video. Let us know what you thought about the PewDiePie situation. Do you think he's right? Do you think he's wrong? Do you just not give a shit? Let us know down below. And if you want to see more videos like this and all the other guys who do subscribe or do provide content for the website and for the YouTube channel, press that subscribe button so you can get your notifications every time we upload a new video. But as always, thank you guys so much for watching. I definitely enjoyed this episode, and I will see you guys in the next one. And on a slightly brief, serious note before we go, for our, if we have any viewers in Nice... Stay safe.